I've only have come across two people in my life that have said, I don't like music. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? Like it's just, they're just like, no, it just doesn't do anything for me. Most, I don't like color people. vision. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Car Chat Podcast, fondly named for this week's guest. But um, with me this week, we have Lee Gray. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Very good, thanks. Can you tell the audience a sort of short summary of who you are and what you do? Uh, Well, my name is uh, Lee Gray. I am the co-founder and lead designer, lead industrial designer of Chiron Audio. And we design and manufacture ultimate uh, home music systems. Right. Yeah, we were, this was sort of loosely introduced. I was discussing with a previous guest called Jay Deverson, um, who is an interior designer and does lots of design on really high-end garages and buildings and stuff like that. And we were talking about audio and he was like, oh, you should chat to my mate, Lee. He makes some mental stuff. <laughs> and I had a look at the website and was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're so. talking the top end here. Um, <laughs> So where did this journey begin for you? Well, it depends how far back you want to go. Um, but if you want to go back to conception, I suppose um, you'd start with childhood and when childhood passions. Um, I grew up with, um, my mum was a musician and my father was a fitter and turner. So I had an equal spread and you can see where loudspeaker designer comes out of that eventually. I grew up on the tools with a huge amount of freedom in the shed. So um, I was three when I've got, you know, my first power drill from my dad. Oh, nice. And I had I had open free range in, in that garage from any age, mostly unsupervised. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but what it did was, you know, it gave me a great deal of confidence and, and this, uh, you know, around making, repairing and creating things. Um, and concurrently, I grew up um, with my mum, who was a was a musician, and music was always a you know a big part of of the house. So, my my first career was actually as a musician. So I I, I studied at the conservatorium here in Adelaide, Australia, um, as a classical percussionist. Okay. And in um, in two thousand, I joined the um, Air Force Air Force um, band. Uh, where I met my business partner. So um, he is also a classical musician. He's a, a classical clarinetist and sound engineer. So the Chiron story all began between us way back in uh, early 2000. And uh, it quite literally started on a Hercules flight, you know, which is the end of the day, <laughs> the RAF flight. And yeah, uh, yeah. Leon was there reading his um, loudspeaker cookbook. And um, if we go back a step, I suppose his and my friendship actually started uh, through cars. So it was um, I turned up the other side, you know, in Adelaide. We moved to moved to Sydney. So young, plenty of time, and he was working on this uh, Mitsubishi Cordia at the time, turbo crazy thing, and was, you know, struggling to get it in on his own. So I offered, stuck my hand up, and you know, we spent a weekend there putting the, the engine and that. So the friendship kind of built out of that. And then, um, yeah, quite literally on this Herc flight, he came up to me and said, look, you're into woodwork and all that type of stuff. I was building furniture and all those types of things at the time. Yeah. And he said, I really suck at that. And I'd love, I want to build some speakers. And he said, you know, would you like to build some together? And um, by the end of that flight, we had four other guys in the band say, that sounds awesome. We'd love, we'd love <laughs> to see the speakers too. And uh, so uh, we came straight home. We uh, registered the business name um, just so we could get, you know, cheaper parts and okay um, yeah trade yeah yeah so it was basically a um it was an advanced hobby for you know three or four years we were we were like i said we were we were young early 20s so every waking hour from uh when we got home was uh let's build speakers and um so we did that for about three years as as a hobby and uh, after a while we went hey this is really costing us a bit of money and you know we're making stuff for friends and family, and we thought, well, let's. The reason we wanted to really do it was try and build the world's best loudspeakers. 
and you know silly enough we you know we literally set ourselves that goal back in 2003 it's like let's have a crack at building the world's best loudspeakers as you do <laughs> and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, so over the next eight years um, you know Leon threw himself into the electronic side of things we we clearly split up the roles um, very early on um, so I was uh, mechanical which ended up turning industrial design I taught myself industrial design and and we launched our very first product in 2011 at the Australian Hi-Fi show and uh, at the time we were you know two boys from country Victoria and we turned up to this um, hi-fi show with these little glossy b5 flimsy brochures saying here come by our hundred eighty thousand dollar loudspeaker <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah that was the reaction but uh, the it was amazing. We won best sound and show across the across the hall. Nice. We had another European, you know, uh, well established manufacturer with a quarter of a million dollar loudspeaker, and we took it took them out, and then consistently did that here in Australia with um, yeah best best sounders and show. So uh, yeah, that's that's the origin. Okay, talk to me about the the beginning bit when you're like, we want to make some loudspeakers. Why did you want to make some loudspeakers? And I guess, was there something about existing loudspeakers that was a problem at that time? I guess if we go right back, it was like, I didn't have any speakers. Let's build some. But as we got, <laughs> as we got, um, <laughs> so as we got further into it, we started to quickly realize that as musicians, we were hearing, uh, you know, lots of colorations and lots of limitations, you know, especially if you listen to uh, classical music or uh, acoustic music. music. You know, you can hear a, a great difference between what I'm hearing there on stage or in the rehearsal room or as a participant in a live venue versus, you know, what what is being replicated at home. So that that really drove us. And then quite early on, we we discovered, um, I mean, if you've been on a website, you would have, you would have seen what the speakers look like yep. and realized that they, they don't actually have a box. Um, at all, which uh, is quite confronting to some people and internet trolls who say that it can't possibly work. But um, <laughs> we're not the first people to do it. You know, uh, like like all designers, we stand on the shoulders of giants. You know, and we've you know looked through the technologies that are around and uh, you know made it our own. But no, we we discovered through um, uh, Leon did in particular. Uh, he found a guy called Cedric uh, Link Linkwitz. Uh, who is kind of the the godfather of boxless speakers? They're called dipole speakers. And once we we did some early tests on that, I remember the first time I heard it, we we played um, like a concert bass drum, and you know a sound that I know very well. And yeah. all of a sudden, I could hear that you know that was a calf head hit with a felt beater, and I went, <laughs> oh my god! All, all of a sudden, you know, we've got especially on the bottom end, um, and you've got this amazing fidelity and clarity. And that was the start of it back in 2003. And then we had to wait for technology to kind of catch up with the dream. I mean, if I should have sent you a picture of the early one, but it was mental. Like we had this 60 litre you know, monstrosity out of stacked plywood and lead and high HDF with a steel internal frame with four of these 12 inch woofers hanging off it at the you know at the front in front of two sealed woofers and then a woofer is a speaker driver by the way yeah. and then at the top we had four more mid-range speaker drivers and then we had this 20 kilogram you know ribbon tweeter hanging off of the front of the, like this giant claw arm like something else <laughs> Star Wars. you know just just trying to get this uh this thing to work and then the amplifiers at the time were just you know, massive for high quality amps, you know, like yeah. we were using toroids that were like this and they weighed, you know, six, seven kilos. You're saying that's sort of like a football size for those that are yeah, listening. Yeah. You know, and we needed eight channels of that, you know. So then, you know, technology caught up and there was massive advances in um, uh, class D amplification by a guy called Bruno Putzis, who really changed the game. And um, now it's become the industry standard, but we were one of the first to jump on on that you know it was a frowned upon word but uh you know um once people heard it and went oh okay <laughs> so now all of a sudden we can take this massive technology and, you know squeeze it down into a into a reasonable space but yeah dipole speaker is is an amazing clarity of sound if you use a box because it gives you free amplification basically okay yeah as soon as you put a speaker into a box you, you immediately get that sound you know, oh you're, yeah you're, nice. you're, you're encapsulating and the second you take it away 
all of a sudden you get this amazing clarity because you've got um, I don't know how technical you want me to get on this. I, I'm in layman's terms. Go for terms it. Of Go for it, and I'm, then I'll ask you to explain if. Yeah, I mean, I'm an I'm an industrial designer, so I, I know a lot of this in layman's terms. But uh, basically, when you have a box, you know, you have a driver, a speaker driver, and it has to move in two directions. And when it's when it's sealed in a box, it's a smaller volume of air that it sees, so it compresses that, right? And it's got a certain amount of force going that way, and it's got a different amount of force going the other way. So you end up with this what they call air spring distortion because the you know the driver's squeezing in an uneven different way. And then you've got the resonance of the system. So then you get this hang on. So after the sound stops, you know the speaker takes a while to slow down and stop. You take the box away. All of a sudden, you've got this amazing speed. You've got dynamics. You've got clarity. You know, so uh, uh, rather than hearing a great big boom and a thump from a bass drum, you're hearing a calf head with I felt beaten. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you get this incredible, um, incredible detail down low. But I mean, that comes, it comes with its challenges. You have to move. You can't fight physics, right? You got to move crazy amounts of air because you get this free, free amplification and, and assistance with a box. We take that away. And all of a sudden, we've got to have big drivers moving lots of air per second big amplifiers, you know, to minimize the distortion and, you know, to power all that. What sort of different level are we talking about here? Like, uh, I'm, I, I play the guitar and I've got yep. like quite a nice amp, but we're not in the, we're not in, the in this sort of <laughs> yeah. realm uh, yeah. and next to me. But if you have a normal, whatever normal is, a speaker in an amp, this is a... 12, um, 12 watt tube amp in a box, but I guess it has a mesh on the front, so it doesn't necessarily have a front, and it's kind of half open at the back, whatever. Um, if you've got a normal sort of speaker box that's, I guess, it contained on most sides, and it's a power, I don't know what they are, how much louder or how much more power an application do you have to have if once you've removed all of that stuff? I probably should preface to our systems are cohesive so they're they're an active system so rather than like a standard speaker system you would have a stereo amp so we, we focus on music so we we focus on stereo we do have customers that you know augment their home theater systems but mostly we we, we talk about music we're replicating music. um so a standard amplifier passes off to a, a box speaker and it'll have what they call a passive crossover where it changes uh crosses over between the various elements within the speaker be it the the bass driver the midwoofer and the tweeter and yeah. that's that's done um in the box itself um and you you would pass one amplifier signal to it and it would split it up into those two or okay. three or four yeah. signals and out we have an active system where we have sent a, uh, an amplifier to each individual element of that speaker so the subs get their own, the mids get their own, the tweets get their own, and that type of thing. And then we massively over-specify the amplifiers in a lot of cases so we can use it in its lowest distortion. So amplifiers, the harder that you run them, it's like a car, right? The harder you run it, you know, the more distortion, the more stressed this thing gets. Um, so we, we run it, especially in the tweeters, like they're massively over-specced. Over but, you know, in our, in our entry-level system, uh, which is the the Kronos? Um, we have six twelve hundred watt amplifiers within within the system. When we get up to our mega systems, we've got eight twelve hundred watt monoblock amplifiers. So they have each amplifier has its own power supply. Yeah. And then within the subwoofers, that has its own twelve hundred watt amplifier, digital signal processing as well in the amp. So there's like 10 1200 watt amps. And are those like a stand, are each of those a standalone unit? Uh, no. So it's, um, we build our amp, we have like a four channel amplifier that we build. So yeah. there'll be two four channel amps. Um, but yeah, so, okay. but it's mono block. So yeah, it's, it, we, we throw everything at it basically. And when you have, let's say you've got a system that can go really loud. Is technically, is it then, difficult to design it or what are the it's certain elements of design to be able to play it really quietly or really is that quiet. not that not really a problem like is in the you always see sometimes you get people who have got like massive speakers but actually yeah. if you want to play it at like talking volume 
It doesn't yep. sound very good. Like I know with guitar amps, they almost have like a, they have a volume where they kind of come alive. Yes. Is that a, like? Is that how does that work in this sort of? I would say that's element? true. Of, yeah, of any hi-fi system, you know, your your ear is less sensitive, lower volumes to the to the low end. So old old school hi-fis they used to have like a I think I can't remember what they call it like a loudness uh, volume. So they'd basically. You know, it's to do with the it's just it's to do with your ear and its sensitivity at different frequencies so you know you boost the bottom end when it's quieter so it sounds actually more more even so a system that's over bloated in the bass you know i mean it will sound more even as it's as it's quieter so okay. our, our method our methodology is where we are there to represent the art which is music to its truest form so we want to get out of the way so um a lot of speakers will talk about speaker designers will talk about you know adding you know certain colors or whatever mm. to it you know like, like a horn loaded speaker or a box a box will bring its own resonance um, we're doing everything we can to get out of the way and just represent it as it came off of the record that's our goal okay interesting and then i guess you then really to, if you're aiming for that as clean as possible, it's then down to whatever the input source is. Correct. So um, we, we're also very different in that we take control of the entire audio chain. So um, we, you know, way back early on, it was like, we want, we want to take control of all of it. You know, we heard the, the virtues of active loudspeaker systems and what that can bring versus a, a passive system. And so if, if, if I can use the hi-fi industry is in a bit of a strange space. If you think about it in comparison to your industry in the, in the car space, you know, um, unless you're a hot rodder, you don't, if you if you want to buy a hypercar or a supercar, you don't go to Koenigsegg and buy the body and Ferrari and buy yeah. the body and <laughs> yeah. somewhere else to buy the wiring loom and somewhere else to buy the double clutch and and then jam it together and go, hey, I've built the world's best car because they have the world's best. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't work like that, and and that's that's literally what the hi fi game is. You know, people go to a dealer and they'll go, okay, this dealer has. The rights to sell those speakers and that amplifier and they're going to tell you it's the best perfect pairing um whereas we went first principles you know we want to take control of everything yeah everything so right down to we we custom make the cables i mean tomorrow we're off for a site visit to measure up the cable of the customer's room that you know is going to be delivered in the next month so we can make them to the exact length um and even uh, recently, we've just brought out our uh, music server. So that's, you know, um, like a, a streamer, if you yeah. like. It's a very high-end computer that's dedicated just to to music. So now we can take control of the in, the entire audio chain. We tune it cohesively. We tune it anechoically. Um, and uh, we know whatever we create, you know, here, we can replicate in your home. Yeah. And we take the guesswork out of it. So we also... Um, our system also has uh, very clever electronics. As I mentioned before, we stand on the shoulders of giants. There's, a, there's, a, there's another Australian company here uh, called uh, Dex. And uh, the founder of, of that, uh, Kim Rory, uh, he's a bit of an Australian legend in, in the audio space. He designed the world's first digital uh, synthesizer called the Fairlight. And single-handedly, that company changed the sound of the '80s. So, uh, the first person to pick that up was Stevie Wonder, I believe. No, he was the second. It was Peter Gabriel, who then held Stevie Wonder, mm. um, and all of those, all of those crazy sounds that you hear from the '80s. It's because of of that machine. <laughs> and so he did that, and they were selling these Fairlights for twenty-five thousand dollars back in the early '80s. So it was only the very top end. You know, yeah. musicians that could could afford to buy these. Anyway, he his other great passion in life was to um, you know fix loudspeakers, and he developed this um, and still going with it, still tweaking it. Where we integrate that into our system, basically, it's uh, you know it corrects for a lot of the the errors within a standard speaker system. So um, it is a preamplifier as well. It, uh, it always has. Uh, it's a DAC as well, so digital audio converters. Um, but one of the 
most amazing things that it does. I mean, it also does all the active crossovers within the system, but it, it fixes. Just sorry, can you just explain a couple of those terms for people? Yeah, like, sure. A, a DAC. What does that? What is that? Uh, and what does digital it do? audio, a digital analog converter. So it converts the music from digital analog. So it um, might take your Spotify stream or whatever. That might be a, a dangerous yeah, word in this space. <laughs> I'll preface this with: remember, I'm the industrial designer. So yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, yeah. go too deep. Um, but the the incredible thing that it does is it fixes the errors in the in the time domain. So when you look at the the sound that emanates from a passive loudspeaker, um, if you can imagine like a an image coming out of the side of your speaker, and you'll get like bits of the bass, bits of the mids, bits of the highs, and it comes out like a smeared waveform. It's like it's literally like dragging a brush across it, and so those frequencies they hit your ears at all slightly different times and slightly different delays and you know um stereo is it's a magic trick right we're trying to you know create an illusion and your ear is incredibly skilled at picking up different tiny minuscule perceptions of change of time of flight of sounds bouncing around the room so what the deck system does is it chops everything all the frequency bands into thousands of pieces and then it delays it all to the slowest frequency. And so, so that way, every sound, every frequency hits your ears at exactly the same time. Now, all of a sudden, the sound stage gets really sharp. So you can sit there and you can, you can tell if, you know, the singer stood up, sat down, much wider, how far back the drummer is okay. sitting. You know, so you end up with this three-dimensional space. And it's all just from, you know, normal you know uh recordings yeah um so it's it's in, it's incredible like that and then the last little trick that we have is room correction so we can then correct for errors that the, the major errors that exist within most people's rooms so in a, a standard room so it's a rectangle you'll have three major room modes front to back side to side floor to ceiling and they typically have these great big humps in the in the bottom end and if you can imagine it's it's like it's like uh it's like a house you need a really amazing foundation to to make it work so um we never boost any frequencies with eq but we we cut out those problems so we'll see these big humps where they exist within the room and then we'll try and get rid of those problem areas and it, and it's quite incredible once you get rid of that all this stuff that might be happening in the high end, you might might be a bit chesty in the vocal range. You know, you might go, oh, Jesus, it's a bit bright, you know, yeah. and it's amazing. You fix the bottom end and all of the rest of that snaps into place. So then we've got that, that flexibility that, you know, we can literally do that in anyone's home, you know, so we, we have a microphone there, we tune to the space and we do all of those types of things. Do any systems do, I, on like a low level with my, surround sound system on my tv and whatever i've like done the thing where you put the microphone you move it around the room and it sort of goes yep. that sort of yep. thing and i guess then it, it's it you're building up it's building up an idea of what each frequency does and how it it knows how it should sound it knows Correct. how it is sounding and then Correct. it adapts it do any systems do like a an active noise like a, like a noise cancelling type situation or anything like that i don't know about for or would there be any benefit yeah, I think it would be it'd be quite challenging. You know, um, I mean, my limited understanding of how noise cancelling works is it it records what's coming in, and then it will play it uh, in the opposite phase. Yeah. So then then it will cancel out. So um, I know that they've they've tried it in cars, I believe. Yeah, I yeah. They, they, they you get it in some modern, uh, like a couple of modern things. I think New Range Rover has it and. Mm. stuff like that um yeah I, I think it'd be quite challenging I mean, i quite quite i'm very sensitive to bad noise cancelling you know, oh, it yeah. creates like that, that thumping and it makes your oh, eyes horrific. water yeah and um i think bose are the only people that i've ever come across that have really really nailed that and the rest of them is kind of uh, it kind of works and the rest of them might just give you a headache and make your eyes water <laughs> yeah 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 that thing you've like i've got various headphones that have had it and you turn it on in like a you're not listening to any music and you suddenly mm. just kind of feel a bit sick like this yeah there's something going on um, yeah yeah early ones in particular i remember when it first came out 
And I was like, mm, that that's not for me. <laughs> um, so when you're, you, you've put the sound system, you've sent it to a client. Mm. Uh, do you, do you scope out the spaces beforehand? Yeah. 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 I mean, we we build limited numbers of these things, obviously it's, you know, um, and they're, they're all highly bespoke. Uh, so we have, we have, we have three standard models in, in our, um, uh, range, but no, we work hand in hand with the, with the clients. Typically a lot of people uh, will buy a, a music system when they're building or renovating a home. That's one of the, the, one of the, you know, they've bought their three or four cars typically first, they're yeah. always the first <laughs> toy to buy. And, um, and then it's like, do I need the fifth Porsche or should I, you know, I really love music. You know, that's what, that's what we find when we get people in the room, people forget, you know, they forget how much they love music. And, uh, and then when they hear it, like they've never heard it before and they're looking around the room going, or I didn't know that sounded like that. I didn't know that could do that. It's a pretty powerful experience. When you, can you explain your sort of three systems and I guess, I, I don't know whether they're like sort of like a low, medium, high price. How, can you explain your, your offerings and the differences, yeah. I guess, between them? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's a bit rude to call it entry level, but it it is our entry level. It's your entry level, yeah. <laughs> it is is the Kronos system. Uh, so just to give you an indication, that's um, one hundred and sixty thousand Australian dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our our systems are basically built on scale. So the Sonic signature remains quite similar across the range but what 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 happens is is the scale and the ease um with the way they deliver it you know it gets better the larger the, the system and it's also it's 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 room dependent you wouldn't okay. try and put our largest system um so the, the image that you just brought up then was chronos uh, you know they they stand about 1.2 meters high yeah um you know two 12 inch woofers they can play on their own. We typically sell them with uh, sealed subs as well, because dipole gets incredibly difficult to do in the in the very lower end. Um, you know, you just have to move so many liters per second; it just gets you know beyond. Um, so we, for that very last octave, we we employ sealed subs. So if you're into just listening to uh, jazz and acoustic music, those types of things. Um, you know, you can use Kronos on its own. Typically, people will want to, you know, really crank it up occasionally. And, you know, so if you listen to Hans Zimmer or, you know, even even orchestra where you want to get the sense of the, the size of the space, you need that, that last octave extension. And like a car, like, you know, when you spec out a car, it's it's very the same. So, you you know, you buy the, the base model, but um, we've, we've worked with customers to do all, all sorts of different finishing from gold plating through to Alcantaras and leathers and stitching and all those types of things. Uh, the next one in our range was our very first speaker because we kind of went the, the Tesla model. We wanted to go for our flagship first and we went hell for leather at that. So that's our, that's our Gaia. That is probably the most... Uh, visually striking uh, of, of all of them. Uh, you either love it or you hate it, but um, it's it's a highly industrial looking speaker. But it's yeah. it's amazing. The, the the scale of that thing is is just beautiful. It's got it's madness. It is pure madness. It has 12, 12 inch woofers, three forward firing, you know, three it, rearward firing. Trying to um, explain what it looks like for someone that's listening. One, go to the website. There'll be a link below, and you can have a look. Mm. But it's sort of funky upright shape with literally what looks like speakers just like not surrounded by anything kind of just like on it yeah it's a naked uh naked speaker so there's no there's no baffle on the bottom end so um the uh we split up it's actually a four-way uh system and so the bottom there's there's six of those 12 inch woofers three forward three over back uh four of them work together as as the lower subs Two of them are the mids, and then it passes off to the to the higher end. And then our final offering is uh, the Phoenix system. So that uh, basically has the, the the speaker system that was at Kronos, which is our entry level. They pretty much become the mid ranges of the system. And okay. then we have these two towers, which are about one point six meters high, of triple fifteen inch dipole woofers. 
so it, it's just yeah like i said craziness and then it hands over to um two sealed 15 inch subwoofers and they're they're um cast from aluminium uh, cast aluminium enclosure the, the speakers look like it because of me and they sound like it because of my business partner so yeah i li i live i live the mechanical side of things um so uh they're all designed here in australia and uh assembled by us and uh we have we have many partners you know for for, for making this happen yeah one of the things i was uh talking to jade with i don't actually think this is on our podcast we it was one of those ones where you stopped the podcast and then yeah stopped, okay. we spoke for like half an hour afterwards about stuff yeah, that was yeah, just like kind talk. of unrelated um <laughs> and i was saying we were talking about speakers and i was saying i i'm doing a renovation at the moment and part of part of my head was like hmm some speakers at some point now I'm going to say probably not this price point, um, but some some speakers. And the thing that sort of surprised me when I was looking around, and I I guess this is possibly how we end up where you are, is the design of most speakers is really boring. Like yeah, it's it's right. a box with some speakers and you're like, yeah. yeah, but you seem to have to go... I don't have an in-depth knowledge of this world, so there might be options below, but it's almost like naught to five thousand pounds box possibly even way above that but then if you spend fifteen thousand pounds suddenly you get shapes or different designs and stuff now what and then this was why he mentioned your company he was like have a look at these these are completely different um from a sort of construction and design point of view is there something much trickier about making cool looking speakers versus a, a box is really easy to build i know that yeah but beyond that in terms of design and audio what gets more complicated or and why do we not necessarily see that or do you have any thoughts on that particular what why don't we see that um i mean if you were to look at my bill of materials to make yeah. something that doesn't have a box it is insane i i think i could hold my hand on my heart and say that we would have the highest bill of materials considering we don't have a box and everyone goes well it's yeah. just a pole it is not just a pole it's <laughs> the, the, <laughs> it is so difficult i don't know if you've ever put like a, a fence post in the ground you know our goal is to make something that doesn't resonate it's rigid it doesn't impart yeah. any resonance on the sound at all so we have to build this ridiculously you know over-engineered pl platform for this so the only thing that moves is the driver cones that's it and so if if like that pole example in in gaia we're building one at the moment but I, I think i threw you some images earlier and it, and it, we laid it all out this time around we just wanted to see it and there's just hundreds of parts that are just built in this this layer of a pole so you know just in the spine of that for example you know there's a there's a 25 mil thick core where all the cables go through it's a cnc milled piece of acrylic then we pass either side of that. We have two layers of stainless six mil. Then we have a mass loaded bearing in between that, and then another two layers of ten mil aluminium, you know, on either side of that. And that's just the that's just that center part of the cone, you know. Um, and then you know, there's the web. Then there's the the facades to go over the top. I mean, just to keep the whole bottom. The first time we built this, like, because it's um, it's got three feet. And we built it and it was like disappointingly flexible. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I had like 12 inch, yeah, you know, 12, 12 millimeter solid stainless hand polished legs on this thing. And it still wasn't rigid enough. And so we we designed this thing and we like to call it the boomerang bar. And it's made, it's milled out of a 50 mil piece of mild steel, you know, 400 mil wide. Yeah. And it was milled into a into a boomerang. You don't even get to see this piece of it's it's on the floor. You would have to lie on the floor, and even if you did, you probably wouldn't even see it. And it's worth, yeah. you know, it's it's you know a couple of grand's worth just to machine these, and then then there's you know these wedges that go in between it, and so it's under these you know constant forces where it's pulling down, and um, so it just you know has all this mass down very low and and highly rigid, and then 
you know, we, we go to we go to stupid lengths. You know, I'm obsessed with like, you know, the the finish that you get like on a watch, you know, or yeah. the beautiful feel that you get on a on a on a camera lens, you know, when you're zooming, you would know that very well, you know, when you're zooming in and out. Yeah. And I wanted that feel. And I spent two weeks and I had to find, you know, a, a retired old machinist here that knew how to spec out ultra, you know, fine threads. Yeah. So then we had the spike bolts just made. You know, these are 16, you know, 16 mil in diameter. We had them broached, you know, we had them hand polished, we had them gold plated, you know, so they're, they're, they're the kind of crazy lengths that that we go to. Um, and I don't know if you've seen inside of our speakers, I, I probably spend more time designing the internals of the amplifiers. Yeah. Every cable has its own home. So it's, you know, it's, it's led away, from, you know, so to minimize noise. Every, every cable has its own little channel. Um, they are beautiful inside, mm. um, you know, probably more so than the outside. Outside, I try and keep it uh, very um, almost monolithic. You know, I want, you know, even though there's nearly 2,000 bolts in Gaia, you see, uh, I don't know, maybe 12. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, so a lot of it is trying to disguise all of those Know, all of those elements um yeah the, your analogy of like a fence post and I, this is what i'm sort of my head is going ah oh, interesting so basically you've got a fence post you've attached yeah. a whole <laughs> bunch of really powerful speakers to each side yeah. of it they're yeah. then cranking and vibrating and you don't want it to move Correct. you just don't want it to move at all zilch exactly yeah yeah, and unfortunately, most people won't let you dig a hole and concrete a pole into their floor. This was going to be my question. Like, surely, surely, someone's like, "Yeah, let's just solid mount them." Like, yeah, <laughs> let's put them in the foundations. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, people go to some crazy lengths in the audio file game. I mean, audio files are, are you know a strange breed. You know, um, I've seen people dig pits underneath their speakers and fill that with you know like a concrete case on them which is then isolated from the rest of their speaker um you know uh, people run their own power to the home which is just the dedicated power source just just for their speaker system you know so you can minimize the noise coming into the system yeah because i i guess in the in the, the the perfection level in terms of nothing moving and whatever is just the speakers move they literally nothing they're attached to moves you've got perfect power source all that sort of stuff so when people are designing their rooms and stuff, I guess it's you know, if, if they're spending if someone's building a, a luxury garage and they're spending millions of pounds on a building and the yada 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 and they're like, we're gonna have our speakers in a room. Do you get involved and have is are there lots of stuff around what the floor is made of or yeah, okay, you want it to have a wood finish, but what is underneath it? What is it on? All of this sort of stuff. 100%. And and that's that's how the friendship started with Jade. That's mm. that's how all this came about. It's actually quite funny because we, we found him in uh, the Rob Report magazine and uh, we were just reading through it and go, oh, this guy I got looks interesting. I wonder where he's located. And it was less than 100 metres from my house. Like I could have thrown <laughs> a lot to his office. And uh, I... I still rib him to this day because I turned up three times, you know, this guy with the speaker, you know, we should talk, you know, just kept ignoring me. Yeah. So I turned up the third time and it's like, oh God, this is really cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, we're, we're best mates, but, um, yes, we, 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 we do the whole thing. I mean, currently, obviously we're working on a couple of projects. I can't wait to show you those when they came on, come off, you know, what we're working with Jade at the moment. Um, yeah, with some incredible garages um, overseas, but we're we're one. We've got one in Queensland at the moment, which is uh, coming to completion at the end of this year. Been a very large project, um, but you know we we helped design that that space. So we you know we basically built a room in a room. So uh, all designed for our Phoenix system, which is the the very high end one. Um, you know uh, you mentioned flooring. You know, concrete is best you know it's the least amount of resonance yeah. you know we've got timber floor that's that's laid over the top of that um we've got uh acoustic you know diffusion and absorption i mean we wanted our customer wanted a beautiful window to see out to their space now yeah. traditionally um 
audio and glass don't mix as well, you know, because you get lots of reflections, all those types of things. So with Jade, what we did is we designed um, a triple glaze window. It's it's massive. I can't remember how wide it is, but it's big. It's about five and a half meters wide. It's one, you know, it's a solid big piece, about four meters high. But the the internal glazing we've actually faceted, so no, none of the first reflections that come from the speakers fire directly at the listening position. They get reflected off into either the diffuser or absorber within the room. And then we have like a, a cloud that cascades down above and um, a ridiculous air conditioning system. It's, you know, we've we've done this uh, massive baffling system to minimize oh, the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want entire, that in my podcast backlog. recording room. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a giant esophagus. It's, it's like it's just it's ridiculous, and um, and then we're working on a really crazy project with, with that that kind of fell out of it. Um, you know, he's he's into his vinyl. Um, I got to do the industrial design on a very special uh, turntable that's designed here, and um, the he wanted something a bit different with the with the vinyl record storage hmm. and you know when you go to a, a record store there's always that cool place that easy spot to flick through records right it's just at hand height it's like kitchen bench yeah. height and you can flick through and you can see everything and uh, you know when you see everyone else's record collection they're jammed in on you know typically yeah. an ikea shelf and everyone's you know got their head tilted over you know 90 degrees trying to read a three mil spine yeah you know what record that is and <laughs> so we wanted to design something that that gave that that ease so um basically we have a meter and a half pit in the floor it's built into the wall uh, it goes up four and a half meters and it's uh it's basically a, a giant lift for a filing cabinet so it has uh, 20 <laughs> so it drawers. yeah it's got 20 drawers it's behind a piece of piece of glass so you can see it going up and down it's you know partly designed by jade so it had to have you know this beautiful theater you know as yeah. well well to i mean if you're spending that kind of money you want to see it right you want to yeah. you know enjoy it so yeah piece of glass drops down first of all you you know you pick your record so we, we put his whole record collection onto a, a, you know digital collection and then you can go okay it's in j5 so um you know, presses the button, J5, records come up, glass comes down, the, the drawer that it's in pops out, the rest of the four drawers unlock because when you're in vinyl, right, you know, it's that analog thing. It's like with the, you know, the, this whole movement to the turbulon and all that type of stuff, with, you know, you know, we're going more analog feel. People want to be able to peruse as well. So, you know, I mean, I've got my jazz record, but now, you know, I might, I want Nina Simone as well while I'm here. So you can do that, push it up, close, the glass door goes up, and then it resets. And it's all uh, you know, humidity controlled and all that type of stuff as well. So That's yeah. like the ultimate version of the press C9 in your, I can't <laughs> yeah. remember what, there was like a hot dog place the where I used to live. <laughs> then you'd go and you put your money in, whatever they're called, those machines. Uh, yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah, um, 100%. Oh, yeah. That... I can see. I can see how this goes. Just mental. It sounds like it's a similar sort of thing to what seems to be happening with resto mods in the car world. So when people are like taking an old 911, that seems to be what everyone does. But they're, they're doing other stuff as well. And you go, well, I want to make this level of final product. And it kind of goes, you can spend nothing and you get nothing. You can, in the, you, let's say, I don't know, pounds, loosely, you could spend a hundred grand and you'll get X. But if you want the level of finish that everyone associates with like the top end, it just suddenly goes 800 grand. Like it, it, the middle kind of doesn't exist because you're then going, yeah, but we have to look at every single component, every single material this process that process we're only making 10 of them blah 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 blah. is that sort of how it seems to work in the audio space oh 100 yeah especially when you get into the the bespoke, the bespoke side of things you know i give an example of the the legs that we have you know the standard is you know it's machined aluminium so you know powder coated but if you want the the stainless ones you know the the hours go from you know we're talking 
couple of hours worth of machining and then off to the powder coat. It's nothing. But if you want the the polished stainless, the, these things are they're not done by hand. You know, these are lapped on you know large glass tables. And we're talking 20, 30 hours worth of work wow. to turn this piece of stainless into a mirror. You know, the the labor just goes yeah. through the roof. And then and then you've got to fit it, right? You've got this thing that you've got to somehow magically get it on there you know, assemble it, not scratch it, not touch it, and then ship it, transport it, get it into it's the person's to arrive. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then the risk factor just goes up, you know, 10x. You know? And then there's, you know, if, if you have got the big, you, uh, you know, you damage it and you know, go take it all apart, <laughs> refinish it. Yeah, yeah, how do you the risk package factor these up. things? That, Send. It's insane challenge actually because there is there's no flat sides on it and um so you can't just cut a big piece of polystyrene and throw it in so um yeah we we pretty much air rack them so uh we use a company in victoria that specializes in moving mri machines and um so we basically put it onto an isolator isolation platform so um it gets bolted to that so each of the feet have, you know, they've got 16 millimeter bolts in each corner. So we can put sizable bolts into that and it literally just floats on the isolation system. It can hang upside down. Not that I want to try that, but it okay. could. <laughs> and, and, and then just build space around it. But, you know, you just have to cross your fingers because, you know, there'll be you know, some disgruntled, uh, you know, forklift driver that'll try and put a tine through it, through the crate. And we've had that. We've had that. We had you know narrow misses twice with tines go through you know wooden crates. You know, oh. years worth of work sometimes. You just put in uh, into a box and pray. <laughs> that is, yeah, <laughs> moderately stressful. And like, it's, oh. it's highly stressful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, in terms of technology and things that are available now and that you use now, are there any particular things that have been super useful in the last like five years or so or that stand out and you go we just couldn't do that this element yeah. five years ago ten years ago what sort of things are like that um as i mentioned to you the 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 dex system but um you know that's that's just come up with a a, a new release you know um but mostly mostly around the tech was amplification and the size of that and and moving to uh, class D technology where you're minimizing the amount of heat that needed to be dissipated. You know, um, prior to that, a lot of, um, especially in the audio file, they'll use like a class A amplifier. And, you know, for a 100 watt class a amplifier, it's about the size of an ottoman and it'll heat your room. You know, okay. it's, all, it's always on. Um, so, you, the so main developments have been in amplification and getting efficiency and power down and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's more than that. It's it's we literally throw everything at it. If there's if there's a place to grab an extra bit of something, we will, you know. And it's and you know you get to that point where it's you know you have to put a lot of effort in. You know, it's like Formula One. You know, to get that last little, you know, the the last little winglet on the back of the DRS system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, just to get that point zero zero one. So you know, you're now. You know, we're in P three rather than P five. Yeah, we just we just if if there's any opportunity, we'll throw the nth degree at it. You know, and it'll seem crazy to others. Yeah, but it's just what it takes. Yeah, and it takes that perfectionist mindset. You know, um, you know that's just. You know, I used to get called a perfectionist a lot, and I used to deny it. I was going, no, I'm not. Um, but I've really lent into it in the last few years. I've gone, you know what? Yeah. That is actually, it's necessary. In my in my business, in the, in the things that I create, I have to be a perfectionist. You know, I, I'm the one that has to bear that pain a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you're like well, we're putting ourselves at the top, and yeah. we're aiming for near perfection. We're not quite sure what that is. I guess that's a slowly moving target, but we're trying to make our stuff as good as it can be. Yeah, correct. And it's you know, it's part of our ethos. Music design, no compromise. That's that that's Chiron. And, you know, I mean, no compromise. There's, there's always a compromise. Let's but it's it's an ethos, right? You know, you have to, but it's it, it's a I think of it more of as a mindset. 
it's let's always do the right thing. What's the hardest we can push this? Where's, what's the furthest we can push this? And when you've made, you know, you've done your latest highest end product, are there still loads of things in the back of your mind that you're like, would love to have done this or the technology is not quite there to improve that? And do you have like a slow list of like, this is an incredible product, but yeah, I can see how this could develop in the future. Yeah, I think you know a lot of people talk about IP protection, you know, and in in our game, it's just you know it's almost not worth it a lot of the time because you know you have to defend it. And the thing is, we're always so forward thinking, you know. It's it's like it's it's like any of those. You know, it's like the car designers and stuff. You know, you, you mentioned before our speakers don't look like anything else, and I quite literally didn't look at other speaker companies when I designed my speakers. Um, I'm a massive sci-fi nerd and, you know, and I looked at cars, if I, if I must admit, you know, um, and, and cars actually, they always lead the way with with design. You know, it, they it, it take the Aventador, you know, yeah. for example, you know, all the cars went from being doughy to faceted overnight. Yeah, you know when that when that car came out, and it took you know it took five years for it to reach a Kia, but it got there. Do you know what I mean? And and it's all because of because of that those those they're 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 leaders in that space, and then um, you know that's that's how I like to think of our you know our company as well. Um, you know I like to think of how it as opposed to a speaker business. I, I think of it more in lines with a car. You know I've always thought of our business more like a Koenigsegg, you know, it's that pushing absolute limits, you know, they might be crazy. Like I, I watched, you know, James interviewing, you know, at Koenigsegg the other day. Yeah. And they were showing the machined billets for the seats, you know, the seat frames. And it even bothered putting the logo on the underside of that, right? All yeah. machined from billets. And I'm going, I'm not that crazy. You know, like if you look inside my amplifiers, there's yeah. logos, there's ridiculous frames, there's everything. It's the same kind of mindset. You know, we just, if, if, there's, if, there's, if, there's, if there's an opportunity for me to beautify something, yeah. I <laughs> you know, uh, and, um, but it's, it's that, you know, where we're making limited runoffs, you know, we're not, we're not, we're, you know, we're kind of like Koenigsegg where they were 10 years ago before they exploded you know, and, you know, to 700 staff or whatever it is now. It's, you know, where that, that handmade small volume type thing. Um, but, you know, I always, I always look to them for inspiration. The, it's, it's, as a designer, it's, it's where all the exciting, it's where all the exciting stuff happens. In your sort of own listening, and you talked about being a professional musician and doing lots of percussion and you're like your ear is like finely tuned to let's say percussive sounds and, and how that sort of thing um did do you find that some people i imagine the sort of resolution on your criticism of an audio system or something is probably really high um because it's what you do it's partly like where you've come from and, and all of that do if general person that's like listens to music but doesn't uh, play an instrument or anything like that um maybe hasn't specifically spent thousands of hours focusing on timing and and on all these sorts of things does everyone come in and go i don't know what this is but there is something going on here or is there almost like a learning process involved for no. No, it's it's fully emotive experience. It's totally transformative. It's you know, I've only have come across two people in my life that have said I don't like music. You know, and it's just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? like it's just, they're just like no, music just doesn't do anything for me. Most, I don't like color people. vision. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for most people, it's you know, music's used for everything, right? From making us joyous to grieving to you know whatever you know that yeah. first date and no i mean we have people come in the door many people come in 
and I've made cry, you know, instantly, especially if it's a piece of music that they've never heard before. Some people it's just completely overwhelming. It's not, it was just the sensory thing. Um, I had a gentleman last year, it was just like, oh, so sorry. This is like, cool. Now that's like the greatest compliment yes, you could ever yes, pay me. Yes. <laughs> you yeah, know, and it's, um, yeah, people are often extremely, it takes some people a while to give themselves permission to sit and listen. Mm. So, because we're so, you know, fast, TikTok, you know, whatever, oh, you know, attention spans of a yeah. nap, you know, like it's just gone. And people have forgotten about how cool it is to throw on. I said, this is what's great about vinyl, right? That's probably the greatest part about vinyl is it forces you to sit down and listen. You know, it's a place of healing. I'm going to chuck on a whole side. I'm going to get a glass of wine and I'm going to get transported to the best concert in the world anytime. Here's my time machine. I'm sitting in it. I'm going to go sit down and listen to Freddie Mercury and he's going to be in my lounge room. And I'm going to go to this concert wearing my Ugg boots and, you know, I'm going to have a great time. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's highly emotive. Um, but when you ask me how I listen, I, I listen one of three ways. I'll either listen as a musician or I'll listen as a speaker designer. Yeah. And if I'm really lucky and I probably had a few beers, I get to listen as a layman and just enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's pretty rare, but I'm getting better at that. It's, it's hard yeah, to does do that, so you listen to your own stuff. Does that kind of ruin, that's probably a strong word, but does that mm. like mess with your enjoyment of music? It can do. Yeah. I bet you mean it, it did before even I started building speakers because you would listen as, as a musician. You know, you'd be listening, but at the same time, you get more out of it. You know, you understand it more. You've got more layers to it, you know, and someone will listen to a solo, you know, great jazz muso or, you know, classical musician. And if you don't know about classical or if you don't know about jazz, it could just sound like a wall of sound. But if you actually understand it and, you know, you, you get that deeper understanding, it can be highly moving. Um, but yeah, it can be very frustrating, especially if you're listening to your own speaker system and you, you know, if you hear something, you what's that? What's that? <laughs> like you can, it can, it can jolt you out of the moment. So, you know, sometimes it's just great to just, you know, treat them as a party thing as well. Yeah. You know, just put on some party music. Cause you know, quite often you get drawn into listening. Um, our speakers aren't designed for volume. You know, they, they play loud enough to give you hearing damage. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but it, um, because, the distortion is so low, you won't get those uh, cues that you normally get from loudspeakers, you know, when right. it gets really bright and edgy. Um, so you have to push them insanely hard to get to that. So you will quite often get people going, can you make it a bit louder? You know, like the screaming yeah. at you across the listening session. Because it doesn't, and, okay, you're not getting the normal yeah. cues that it's really loud. Correct. It's, yeah, interesting. Yeah. That is yeah, interesting. Yeah, especially in especially in the high end, you know, when it gets all glassy and bright, yeah, you know, that's 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 not there. So, yeah, I, I wish I could turn off more, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just I, I love music. I, I live it every day. I'm surrounded by it, you know. And I'm fortunate my kids all play and that type of stuff. So you know, my my great I'm a terrible piano player, terrible. But that's my great pleasure is you know in a break, you know, I'll go down and tinker on the piano for half an hour i'd never play it of anyone but <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah that's all right um yeah. Uh, yeah and then have so okay having these speakers at work and i imagine at work you have a do you have a, a listening room yeah set up yeah do you have a similar setup at home yes well i i do a lot of it from home actually so it's like okay. by audition yeah so we have them in uh uh, in a store but we also have them here as well so do you know home auditions um and then does that in your own listening like if i think about when i listen to music it's it's all the time it's like walking around with some headphones in the kitchen through kind of like a radio uh in my office i've got a bit more of a speaker set up, set up but pretty rubbish one um and like it changes in different places what for your own your own like level of like daily listening, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do you do? And like have you 
adapted <laughs> and gone okay but i can i can get away but i have to listen to headphones but it has to be this level of headphones or these headphones how does that all pan out in your life yeah um i go through waves with it you know early on i just um i, I remember we did a hi-fi show and so you're doing intensive listening for three days straight and uh, you know my, my wife at the time was you know managing the door and stuff and we jumped in the car afterwards and she sat down and she went oh can you turn it off they just sound broken <laughs> you know what I mean? it sounds broken because um typically you know the way that we consume music now we consume more music than we ever did right but we it's such low quality it's it's a two-dimensional experience yeah you know and when you do music at this level it becomes completely immersive three-dimensional but to answer your question i've got a little bit better at it i don't listen to a lot of music because i do get frustrated by that when i'm not listening to the system uh it'll be mostly you know i listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff these days um but you know i i will listen to um yeah, it, it, it's it's an understanding it, it, it's a different mindset sometimes you know you, it, it's almost like an occasion as well but the beauty of our speakers as well is the because of the the dipole type of thing they they evenly disperse the frequencies throughout the whole room so they actually disperse through the whole house very evenly so you can go next door and it sounds very even you mm. know what i mean as opposed to just hearing this thumping bass coming yeah, through okay the wall. yeah so um yeah but not so much i don't listen to too much music on the on the on the cheap headphones it does drive me a bit mad uh, especially in the car it's it's, it's a challenging thing you know, to do good audio and in, in car as well but um yeah what's the is that in the car you have so many vibrations and all sorts of, I, mm. it's impossible to to get good audio in a car and actually you're like I don't know. It's a challenging environment, isn't it? Presumably, a um, an audio show is also a horrific environment for listening to yeah. music. You've got everyone's yeah. playing their bloody music. Yeah, correct. <laughs> correct. Yeah, it's, it's it's sometimes it's negotiating with the neighbours <laughs> at the hi-fi shows. Yeah. Um, but like I said, we consistently win best sound show uh, because of the flexibility of our system. So we've got the room correction and, you know, we've just got a lot of cards up our sleeves where we can actually do it. Whereas most people are stuck with just moving the speakers around the room and sticking cushions up or, you know, yeah. whatever it, it might be. But, you know, to, to answer the car, uh, we've, we've dipped our toes into that just of late, actually. We, um, for a customer, he had a classic DeLorean and, uh, he really wanted, you know, a music system in his and, um, uh, he was actually my anaesthetist. And, um, so anyway, we did it, we did it as a project and, uh, we're, we're thinking of releasing it as a kit cause it, it just took so much time to design this thing. It was crazy. So, but you know, we, we went, we went, as always, we went crazy hard with it. You know, it's got malt, it's fully active. It's got DSP, you know, it's got all of those bells and whistles and DeLorean was kind of a unique use case in that had decent amount of volume where the golf clubs or the the time machine was meant to go the flux capacitor yeah. um so we had a bit of volume there to to play with so um yeah they, they came up pretty good it was uh it was it was um it was a challenge but it was a lot of fun too i mean you spent did you do a lot of like sound isolation type stuff <laughs> yeah um well i would like to do more um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but especially, you know, where there's what, two mil of fiberglass between you and, you know, yeah. a noisy, a big, nice booming six. box of glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 They're a strange beast. The, the DeLorean, I've spent a fair bit of time crawling around inside of one now. So <laughs> it takes a little bit of the, uh, uh, mystery out of it. <laughs> well, that has, that has been actually really interesting. There's loads of, it's, it's that thing of like, okay. I know a little bit about this, but not that much. Um, I can now get a bit more of an idea of where we're coming from uh, in this in this sort of space. When you said you made a point earlier about people kind of like just buying their own bits and, and pushing it all together, and I just mm. suddenly my brain flashed to any any hi-fi magazine I've ever read, and it's like exactly buy yeah. these speakers, and then we think it pairs really well with these speakers. You know. Surely yep. the manufacturer has like yeah. 
messed with this and gone, this is tailored for this. Yeah. But in terms of we've got your end, you're like, right, top end. Are there any manufacturers that you think that do it quite well at like different price points? Yeah, I mean, there are some some box speakers that you know I I do I do like. I I try to steer clear of uh, ported speakers. What's that? Um, so have you ever seen a when you look at your speaker, they quite often just have like a hole or a pipe yeah. sticking at the bottom of it. Um, they are basically tuning a resonance, and at best that resonance is three quarters of a wavelength out of time with the rest right. of the speakers. So it's very easy and it's more efficient to use a ported speaker. You get a lot of boom and a lot of, you know, a lot of bass. You know, people go, oh, that sounds great. There's lots of yeah. bottom end, you know, and it's just like, the, you know. So, yeah. And, and you know, it, it just messes everything. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I try to see the clear of ported. So uh, when you talk about in like speed and uh, of speakers, you know, you've got dipole, you know, ribbon speakers, they're, you know, the, 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 the fastest. And then it goes, you know, sealed speakers and then, and then ported and there's a couple of other types as well. Um, so, yeah, a, a good sealed speaker I like. Um, and Dyn Audio, I quite, you know, that was the first speaker I first heard. That was my first introduction to high-end hi-fi. I went, you know, into a hi-fi store and I went, oh, okay. That's that's different. All of a sudden, there's a sound stage, and you know all those those types of things in front of you. But um, yeah, it's 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 a challenging one. Um, there there are some very good uh, you know Euro, European speaker brands as well that they, they put a lot of effort into reducing all those colorations too out yeah. of the box. Um, you know you can do a lot to get to get rid of it. You can't get rid of all of it, but you can. And get rid of a lot of it. You just have to go to Herculean lengths. You know, it's not just 25 mil of MDF medium density file yeah. on the board, which most speakers are. You know, to be honest, most of them is only 10 mil thick. But um, <laughs> yeah. so they actually create another speaker with their box. <laughs> so, um, uh, but um, yeah, headphones. If I'm traveling, I reckon what Bose done with those headphones just was just amazing. You know, that noise cancelling thing, that just changed my world. I remember when I first got those and for travel, all of a sudden, you know, you put it on and the entire cabin disappears and I don't have to blast my head off and I can hear, you know, the dialogue, you know, when someone's talking on the movie without, you know, giving myself a headache. So they, they were a real, that was a real game changer for me. That, that experience of first trying noise cancelling headphones in a noisy environment or something, it, it's crazy isn't it like i they, i've had some noise cancelling i think bose ones for a long time um somewhere around still um but i and i now use just some airpods pro like most most of the time um and you're like sitting on a tube like in the london or on a train or something and you just turn them on and you suddenly realize that the volume you have to listen at just drops like a, yeah. an insane amount Absolutely. suddenly just like everything comes alive definitely day to day that seems to be the way uh, something i was reading about recently um which headphones don't give you and and guitar amplifiers and your speaker systems will 100 percent give you is moving air mm. and the fact that we don't just hear with our ears that's visceral and the difference, uh, it must be, you, <laughs> you must come across this occasionally, but yeah. people listen to a sound system on YouTube, a speaker, a hi-fi, <laughs> a whatever. Yeah. And then someone will critique it listening at home with some headphones on, yeah. unknown That's headphones, right. whatever EQ that they've got, and go, yeah. this one sounds better than that one. Like, um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Recorded on their phone too. Recorded on a phone, played yeah. over the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the internet trials are just, just full on, you know, because people are just scared of what they don't know a lot of the time. 
too, you know, and they're very, very quick to judge. I mean, uh, quite often we put a picture up of our stuff. It's like, oh, that just doesn't work. You know, it can't work. You know, it's crap. And, it's just, you know, <laughs> and they'll be like, you know, when I heard it, it's like, well, I don't think I've actually exhibited it in your country. But yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> we've not met. And if we've not met, it's unlikely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's 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 funny, but um, I don't, I don't know. I think people are just yeah, you know, they're scared of the unknown. You know, if it's different, you know, it's um, you know, and a lot of people, you know, you know judge with their eyes, and um, but I, I I don't know. It's 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 funny. The thing that I find frustrating is it's. I wish people would treat the hi-fi industry more like the car people do. You know, uh, there's a, people have a have a lot of enjoyment. You know, they'll they'll watch YouTube clip after whatever. You know, they'll watch Gumball mm. and they'll go, "Geez, that's that's amazing." You know, what would it be like to drive that? You know, Lamborghini or yeah. you know, whatever it might be. And there's a certain level of respect for it. But once it comes to hi-fi, there's this strange thing. You know, and it gets hard past the price point. It's like. I don't like it. It's too expensive. It can't be as good as my Kef five hundred dollar something. You know, it's a it's a very strange mindset, and um, I'm not sure how we change that or why. I don't know. Maybe you can give me some insight as a car. I don't know because I think something I experienced. I I used to go on um, car forums quite a bit. Um, There's a big one in the UK called Piston Heads. That's like when I was sort of up and coming kind of learning about cars and whatever i'd be on the forums and i'd ask some stuff and what i have found now is i'm i'm sure they're still fine but my exposure to stuff recently um i was talking to someone about this the other day i went on i had a bmw m2 at the time and i was doing a little bit of track like driving on track occasionally and i was looking for some new uh probably brake pads because the the brakes were just dying like quickly on track and i was like okay this is a good time to go back to forum life go into the bmw m2 section literally and go hi does anyone run their car on track has anyone run different brake brake pads any thoughts um and forums being forums and I, i can't remember whether i did any like in my head i knew i should probably write a little life story yeah (laughs) before i do my post but i was like whatever like let's just do the post obviously comment number one is get some instruction (laughs) cheers mate and then (laughs) and like number two you're not braking properly number three i drive my car on standard brakes on country roads no problems you're like okay cool comment number four i drive my car on the nurburgring no problems and the track i was driving my car on had not long straights, but quite a few straights that had really heavy braking zones. The Nürburgring is quite a long flowing track. So you get yeah, quite a long least. amount of time to have cooling. Um, and yeah. anyway, yeah, eventually I was, someone I was like, look, I do a bit of racing. I've got some other cars. Yeah, da, 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 da. And I just gave up. And because of the podcast and uh, social media and photography and all that sort of stuff, I now go to and it's much easier to go to someone who you go well they know i'm not going to ask everybody and anybody i'm going to ask one person like oh oh, i want to know about cryon audio okay i'm gonna ask you (laughs) yeah and you're gonna tell me your thoughts and i'll go right i think he probably knows more about his company than anyone else and like yeah. with the brakes i asked someone that ran cars and he was like this model this option you'll tick 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 thank you very yeah. much um, yeah. and it's sort of taken me away from forums because i now just try and seek from someone i know that knows and social media allows you to do that because you can you can generally get in contact with people who you can see I've had some experience or whatever in, in whatever you're looking at. And that, I wonder if audio is a similar sort of thing. Like forums, people just, they can be great. But often I think you find a lot of people in forums who just want to talk about the stuff that they want to talk about, fine. But a lot of other people are just getting on and doing it. 
or yeah. just like living their lives and for example your customers and customers of high-end audio i imagine probably do are pretty nerdy on it and mm. keen on it but they're probably not discussing they're possibly not discussing 500 pound systems they'll be chatting to their mates who might have similar level they've all spent whatever 200 grand on a hi-fi setups and they've listened to different high-end things and they'll just chat to those people about it and you'll never hear about it on a forum yeah i mean to be honest we we don't i mean most of our customers the, the audio file game is is, is quite hobby based you know they mm. they it, it, it's it's uh they like like to tinker and yeah. to mix and match it's part of the hobby you know it's it's like restoring a car you know and it, they like to, to do that so um our approach is uh quite different because we come in the door and we say oh bang here it is <laughs> you know it's, it's uh, yeah and good on cue um you know it's it's it, it's it's delivered as a whole and so we kind of apart from you know, bringing in maybe a different source, you know, you can bring in a record player, those types of things. Our focus is about delivering a music experience. Yeah. So we cater up for people who love music and for people who want the ultimate music experience in their home without the fuss. Yeah. So, you know, we don't, uh, you know, quite often the, the, the audio files, you know, won't be our uh, key market. And you know, we do have them, you know, people that have actually heard it, and, you know, and a lot of the people that want to get off the ride as well, they've been trying for years, you know, they've been trying to get to this holy grail where they can just sit and enjoy the music. And then they go, you guys deliver all of that, you know? So we're probably, we attract more people that don't come with a, it's a bad word to use, but baggage, I suppose, from that, you know, they just come into it. They go, oh, we just love music. We just want the best music, you know, home. That's, that's it. And that's, and, and that's what the budget. We, yeah, and that's what we can provide. You know, it's that that ease. It all works. It's, It'll work in that home. It's an interesting one because I look at audio and I and I can see how the different, like let's say the car, if you look at cars, of, often people are, they're never one and done. There's like lots of different things to learn about, different companies, blah, 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 different experiences, yada, yada, yada. But I guess... Uh, from my perception and this is how I'm going to sort of approach if I get a hi-fi system for my new place it, I basically want to be one and done yeah not okay maybe 10 years down the time down the line I might have more budget or whatever but I don't yeah. want to be playing with different stuff I just want to go I want a really good system for my budget and I kind of want to forget about it like I, I want to look at it and go, it looks nice or, or whatever, mm -hmm. fit all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I just want to be able to hear really like music in the best way I can. And the system's good, but I don't want to be, I'm not going to be doing what I would do in the car world, which is going sideways along. Like I want to try different companies to see the different stuff. And I can see how maybe if you're really into it, you know, that is, if that is a, that is a really interesting thing to play with. Um, but I suspect most people that consume music, which is everyone, like apart yes. from the odd person you've met, um, right. <laughs> music is, it's it's the music and the sound system is the gateway to access the music. And you kind of just want to be like, I've bought the, the best sound system that I, at this time, can afford or want, and et cetera. And then I kind of want to forget about it for the rest. Like, what's it? Yeah, you don't you don't want to buy the hobby. I mean, I give you an, uh, another analogy. Aside from cars, it's uh, the 3D printing game. You know, for a long time, you know, the if you wanted to use a 3D printer, it was it was literally buying a hobby. You know, you had to tweak it to understand it. You know, all those types of things, and I, I stood well clear of it. You know, because I didn't need another hobby. You know, and then the, the game 3D printing has just changed in the last 12 months. There's been a couple of key companies that have come out. And just brought game changer technology when all of a sudden it's a tool you know that's that's what i want i want the end thing i want the thing yeah that, like, i don't i don't want the i don't want to make a thing to make a thing you know it's it, and i think that that's similar with audio um i mean just traditionally the the people that you know have learned about hi-fi you know are the are the audio files but i think there's this 
well, there is, you know, there's the whole other bucket of people that just want the best. They just want the best without the hassle. They just want it to work. And yeah, they're, I think they're the people that resonate most strongly with Kyra. Mm. Yeah, they want the solution. And it, that's it, you don't want, they don't necessarily want a new hobby or it's not their hobby. And and it's daunting. I know you can walk into a high five store. I remember it's daunting. It's like, oh, yeah, what's an app? What's a preamp? What's a what's what's a DAC? What's a cable? You know, like it's there's a there's a lot going on there. You know, they they just want a car. Give me a car. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and Give me the keys. <laughs> my problem is when I find something slightly interesting, I like to know more about it. To and the more that the more you know, the more you want. I, I, I just like digging and digging and digging and digging to a point that it gets ridiculous. And you're like, you know, Tam, you don't need to know about the ins and outs of building a 3D printer and running one and whatever and like blah 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 blah. You know, it, yeah. it's it's part of my nature. And I think some I very much my brain clashes with people sometimes. You come across who just have a they they approach things in a different way. And not one is not some one of them looks feels a lot simpler sometimes when they're like, yeah. oh yeah, uh, I want a uh, some sort of audio input device for my podcast, and I'm like, cool, right? Let's spend fifty hours reading about different microphones. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 no. I don't care. One yeah. that works, and I'm never going to change it. I'm like, oh yeah, but what if you have this one? And then like down the line, when we got more budget, you'll get They're like, no, 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 no. I want something yeah. that works and I'm going to forget about it. I'm not going to spend any thoughts on it as long as it works. You know? That would be quite relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Especially your game, the camera game. That's, uh, that's I a, think with cameras, old. I am starting to come out the other side of I've, Spent a lot of time. I think there was a lot of change. There's always a lot of change in whatever period of time you pick. But let's say when I started, I don't know, 15 years ago, he says, as an absolute guess, it might be longer, it might be less. Um, the technology shift in that period of time, we basically went SLR, single lens, reflex, mirror, good type things to mirrorless cameras we have now. And going through the high-end cameras being one to now the high-end cameras being mirrorless, that for me was a meaningful shift in cameras in terms of my day-to-day -day usage of cameras. They basically mm -hmm. got quite, they got a bit smaller, technology got much faster, and you could charge them by USB. That, that charging by USB as an odd thing was probably the biggest change to my day-to-day -day photography in the last yeah. 20 years. Because I'm always yeah. in cars, and like, I don't have necessarily want to carry around a charger and a three pin plug. And you're like, that's it. I just plug it in the car, job done. I arrive at destination charged. It's like niche, really niche thing. But as my usage as a professional photographer, that was unbelievably useful. And I now have got to the point, and I think it, maybe it's just an age thing where you're younger and you're like, there's a, dad, we need to get a new TV because the new TV is going to be better. So TVs, I'm like, I mean, 4K, I don't think I need 8K. At some point in time, I'll get 8K, but whatever. Like, yeah. like I've had this TV. I only just bought this TV and it was expensive. Turns out you bought it 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then cameras, I'm just, I'm not that bothered. I love new yeah. tech, but I'm, for me, it's like the tech has got good enough to deliver all of the stuff that I need. Yeah. I used to have the same with, with, with drums. I remember that, you know, there was always the, the guys are like, what symbols you got? You know, you got this and what sticks you using? I don't know. These ones are brass and it sounds, <laughs> symbol sounds really nice. And yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, you can just, there's so many damn colors in it anyway, you know, depending on how you hit it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I was, I was never really that, that, that gear guy, you know, I liked, I liked nice stuff, but it's, yeah, it's, um, I don't know. It, it depends, you know, it, speakers, I'll go down the rabbit hole. You know, uh, um, you know, on the occasional car, I'll get nerdy and go down that rabbit hole. It, it depends on what your vice is, I suppose. Exactly, and then and that's that is fun. And I think yeah. probably most people have one, oh, maybe yeah. more than one, but like one thing you really nerd out on. Yeah, 
and like that's fun and for you it, it is your business and yeah. it makes sense like if yeah. you're not nerding out on it not people ain't gonna buy your speakers <laughs> yeah yeah i mean my advice at the moment is a massive space nerd you know i just can't get oh really you know, rocket launches and spacex and all of that and you know that the first re- time i saw a spacex rocket land back on a platform yeah what <laughs> Yeah, that's mental, isn't it? Look, he, this is how much of a nerd I am. I made this. This is a a grid fin, and that's my that's my coffee holder. My my. What is okay placement. for the people listening? And <laughs> for me, can you just explain what that is? Well, you know, on, on SpaceX's rocket as they come, yeah, down, and uh, the the first stage, as it yeah. re-enters the atmosphere, they've got a series of fins that actuate and change to to change its pitch and ah, know, okay that type yeah, of yeah, stuff yeah. so it you know can keep itself stabilized as it returns back to earth so oh right yeah. so you made oh nice 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah massive massive it, it's I, I i particularly threw myself into it through covid you know i just turned off all news channels all of that news and i just focused on something you know that that made me happy and that was the internet that, is yeah. amazing isn't it mm. like yeah the information you can now find yeah and and if you can consume it really badly you know so, <laughs> you know you, you can just it's terrible so as much you know it's hard to be disciplined it is really hard but i you know if you see my youtube channel it's you know bits of f1 mm. bits of you know space nerd stuff bits of uh speaker nerd and that's that's pretty much it as your, <laughs> your, 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 your vices it, yeah yeah that's yeah. it <laughs> yeah just keeps feeding me the same stuff i know people go like oh i look at my home feed and you're like oh it's all of this certain size of stuff i didn't choose that and you're like shut up you did yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely you, you click on all these videos even if you think you, you're like i'm not going to click on that because i'm not interested like you, you do though you you know yeah. yeah the algorithm knows you better than you <laughs> exactly right well i i normally wrap these up with five mm-hmm. questions and they're normally quite automotive themes so i, I might give you the option of, of adding an audio twist or whatever if you want um do you have a most memorable driving trip or journey trip or journey yes so we in the air force band we did a road trip road trips in australia are quite long mm. um so we drove all the way from sydney new south wales right up into long reach which is i don't know many many days of 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 um of driving on a truck but i was driving the band truck at this stage and it was my first experience with um road trains and you know you're driving on a dirt road and the the mining trucks i don't know if you've ever seen them here no, in, not, in australia what is this? Uh, so it's it's quite literally a truck that's a train and it, it has so many carriages on the back. I can't remember. I think something like nine, up to nine bogies on the back. Oh, wow. And the and the amount of distance what? that these things shift, like from the front oh. to the back of it, because you can imagine the whip, you know, that comes around. <laughs> but I remember it, it was incredibly, incredibly hot. And, um, you know, the, the seat that I had was this, it was a, the, the gas strut was not right. So every time you went over a bump, you would hit the roof, hit the floor, hit the roof, hit the floor, hit the floor. <laughs> and, you know, and I've been doing this for, you know, for a couple of weeks. You know, we were driving six, seven hundred k a day, and then we would stop, set up an entire concert band, like full truckload, you yeah. know, forty piece concert band, do do multiple concerts, maybe even do a little march, and then you know, then hang out with the guys afterwards and that type of stuff. But yeah, and I remember it was. We, yeah, we had, the, we had the truck there and it was very hot and I just wanted to crack the quarter window, you know, and then the older guy, the sergeant, you know, he's going, don't do that. Don't open that window. Why? Oh, it's good. It's hot. Next road train we go past, the whole glass window, the whole side window doing 110k an hour on a dirt road just comes flying in on me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to spend the whole rest of the next week with no window driving around outback Australia in this, in this, <laughs> in this truck. And I mean, I can remember when we turned up to the Long Reach. We were there, like, you know, worried about security, you know, and yeah, well, 
during this rehearsal and I turn around and there's this, there's this guy hanging out of the truck cab, uh, you know, like trying to steal stuff and I'm chasing him down the street <laughs> of this country town. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was memorable. I think, yeah, we had most of the band cracked it about halfway through. Like there was almost a mutiny. It was, it wow. Was, it was full on. <laughs> uh, have a, uh, this might seem like a, a simple question. You're an Air Force band. Why are you driving? <laughs> well, you have to do everything. You're literally. Why are you not flying? <laughs> yeah. No, we, we spent more time on the road, especially. Um, it depends. You know, we did we did a lot of flying as well. Don't get me wrong. You know, there was when we were in Sydney, there was, there was a lot of time there. We spent more time in Darwin, which is which is a long trip. You know, mm -hmm. if you look on the map, it's half of Australia. You know, you're flying yeah. across. It's, it's a long way. Um, so a lot of time in a Herc, which is, you know, I don't know if you've seen them, like it's red, you know, canvas chairs with net backs. Oh yeah. They look it's knees into uncomfy. Locked. You know, like you're staring at that guy there, very loud, can't even talk, you know, that type of stuff. So yeah. And then we moved to Melbourne man and they flew privately most of the time, which was great. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cause you spent most of your time in air movements waiting for the plane to take off. So, yeah. you know, we spent days there. Actually, the most we, memorable flight back, we, we, we came back once from um, Dili, which is just north of Australia. And we came back. We'd been away for two weeks entertaining the troops over Christmas. And then um, the guys flying the plane thought we needed to stop in Darwin. We didn't want to stop in Darwin. We wanted to fly all the way back home, you know, get back to the family. So they decided to um, yeah, land in Darwin. And then the, it was new, the plane was new at the time. And when they went to start it up the next morning, they used the wrong battery pack, blew everything in the plane. Oh, dear. And it, it took us another four days, you know, <laughs> to get home, you know. We came, waited air movement for six hours. Yep, nope, not going home today, guys. Off you go. You know, and you just kept doing oh. that. So I spent much more time waiting for a plane than actually sitting on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Is everyone wearing noise-cancelling headphones in a Hercules? Not in those days. It was just yellow plugs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just can't just years. block. Mm. Um, oh, that's. I mean, that sounds. I, I've I've never seen one of these road train things before. That looks absolutely mental to go past oh, one of them. Yeah, they're terrifying, and and the roadkill. You've never seen so much roadkill. Like just hundreds of kangaroos in all bits and pieces, just strewn either side of the road because they don't stop. They just keep going. Yeah, and um, yeah, they just wow kangaroos bits everywhere. Crazy. Crazy stuff. If you could, I, I'll give you the both options on this. If you could only drive one car and you've got like a sort of practical shitbox on the side. Yep. So one sports car for the rest of your life. What would you choose? One sports car. Does it have to be a sports car? It doesn't have to be, no. <laughs> um, I'll, tell I, you my two, I'll tell you my favorite cars. How does that work? Um, Go on then. So I, I've got a bit of a thing for small cars. So I, yeah. I love. I've got a. I've got a classic 1969 Mini K. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so that's that's my that's that's my pride and joy. Yeah. But if I you know cost no object you know, for a fancy car, I'd probably be the guy that gets a Bentley, like with a really awesome experience in the back <laughs> someone else yeah. could probably drive me around you know I, I love fanging it through the hills here as well don't get me wrong you know on occasion but most of the time i just get so frustrated driving through traffic i reckon that whole idea of you know lounging in the back yeah or, you know the mega van just fully i was about down. to say surely it's the it's the big yeah. like viano or whatever that's oh, like been treated yeah. like an audio yes. room the iveco <laughs> the big iveco with yeah Absolutely, surround sound and the speakers, and someone else is driving, and I'm in the back drinking G and T's. That sounds epic. <laughs> and then it, the the spin on that one, I guess, would be if you had one sound system, mm -hmm. in and it's got to f go in your home. So I guess one. which 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 of, I presume you one of yours. Um, is this a loaded question? <laughs> 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 which 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 fits best into your home environment? The the Phoenix, the the big bad boy. I uh, probably Gaia. I've got a I've got a sweet spot for Gaia. Yeah, I, I guess that's where the story started. And um, for my size lounge room at the moment, that would be that would be the one. It's just I, I love the look of it too. It's just um, it's just fun. Um, what do you think is the most? I don't know. 
to say undervalued, but best value. And I don't know how much you listen to other sound systems, but mm. sound system on the market. Is there like a, a certain brand or something that you go, at, actually, a, a, I'm going to say a more, probably a more a cheaper price point than you start at? You go, they do really good stuff. I rate them. I would buy a speaker from a speaker builder. If you're, if you're looking for audio quality, so, um, you know, you don't buy, don't buy someone that builds TVs. Okay. You know, as their primary yeah. business. You yeah. Know what I mean, to, to buy, to buy a speaker. So there is a lot, you can get a lot of value. So for say a sealed box speaker, I would look at an Australian brand called uh, Sirhan and Swift. They're designed by people that are highly skilled in speaker design. And that's their primary thing. And the value for money, you know, they punch so far above their weight. You know, it's um, everything is considered and it's um, designed with audio at the forefront. Yeah. Music quality. Something we talked about earlier is with the, you know, you pick up a magazine, it's like you should buy this amplifier and this set of speakers and stuff. Do we end up with that? Because building a speaker, we get a bunch of people that are very specialist in building speakers and speaker enclosure type situations. And then as a separate thing, like someone that might build an amplifier, might it's like a different set of skills and you just... You just get companies that just make amplifiers. Is that is that correct? Probably why we end up in this situation rather than one company, which probably needs to be That's quite right. big to do everything. Yeah, and it, and it's built by founders. You know, yeah. I I founded this company because I love building passive speakers. I founded this company because I love building amplifiers. I founded this company because I love building speaker cables. Yeah. So they find that niche, and and that's what they and that's what they focus on. What we do is hard. You know, it's just crazy. Like I said, our bill of materials is just off the scale because we're building everything. So it, it's a very difficult thing to take on. Very difficult. But but the, the reward is the reward is a cohesive system that is designed to work as a whole. Is there a company that or a product that you've seen come out recently that you think is particularly interesting for one reason or another? Do you know what I really like? This is it's going to be totally lo-fi, but is is the freedom of the Bluetooth speaker? Mm. <laughs> or you know, it's not critical listening, but the you know, my daughter got <laughs> yeah yeah. So my daughter got like a I can't remember what it is. It's like a it's not a UE boom, but it's it's something like that. Like that, yeah. Yeah, and the way that we can just you know we're outside in summer. You know, you're having a barbecue and you throw it on the table and it's it's not hi-fi, but it's pretty damn good. You it's know? also and there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Exactly. And it's a hell of a lot better than playing it off the speaker on your phone. Yeah. And and it, and it just it, it brings a level of enjoyment above its investment value. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a hundred bucks and we take it. God, that sounded very Australian then, didn't it? For the English bucks. <laughs> um we take it everywhere. Take it camping, you know. Um, it, it everywhere it, it it comes with. So yeah, that's an interesting little thing about having a sound system because, like, I listen to music all over the place. Uh, uh, I play. Recently, I bought and I just held up for the camera. Um, it's like a little speaker. I hold it up again. It's actually an amplifier. It's not a yep. speaker jobby, but it does both. Yeah, most of the time, I want to be playing through my freaking hand-wired Morgan down here. And that sounds awesome. But at the same time, I don't want to carry that around. And I want to be able to enjoy playing an instrument somewhere else. And same with listening to with a little UE Boom. I take a one of the small ones. I think it's a Boom 2 I've had forever. Um, in my luggage, whenever I go abroad just so that you can listen to it on a beach and like you can enjoy it. Now, if you set up a dedicated room, mm. which all these, these things are going to have to be in because, you know, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You have to specifically go to that room to listen to the music. 
that's a little bit tricky. Do, do people end up with... Does anyone you know have this level of system in multi-rooms? One customer has two systems. Yeah. Nice. Uh, of, of ours, yes. Um, but yeah, it's... What I, what I love about our system is it's, it takes you away from the daily grind. You know, yeah. um, everyone's got a home theater these days and it's a whole bunch of speakers, you know, with this in, investment spread across 20 bits of kit. You know, our, our system is about investing in something truly remarkable, you know, into one thing that does something very well. Yeah. And we create these environments where people just disappear. You know, it's just, it, it's such a busy life these days. People are just so busy and on our customers in particular, you know, they're, they're right at the pointy end, you know, obviously. Um, and they, it's, it's a, it's a place to revive, you know, and to think and to, you know, uh, reset and, and, you know, like I said before, it's, it's, it's literally a time machine, you know, it, it can take you back to that most amazing moments in your life. You know, we've all got those pieces of music, you know, where we went on our first date or whatever it might be, you know, it's, it, it'll, it'll take you there, you know, remember your, you know, past loved one or mm. whatever, whatever, whatever that piece of music might be, or it could be just to go have a, you know, a bit of fun and dance to, yeah. you know, dance around the lounge, you know, it does that too. So, um, yeah. 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 It's a spe you're, you're going to your listening room, whatever that is for you're going for an experience and like a, a chill out or whatever, like, yeah. But within, within like a lot of homes are open plan too. So like I said, yeah. they, they, they really do just, you know, they, they spread throughout the home. You know, that was one of the, I mean, one of our early on customers phoning us up and said, didn't, we didn't realize how much we were going to enjoy it. Like I got a text message, you know, I'm out, I'm out the other side of the house cooking a couple of steaks on a Saturday night. And I, I didn't realize, you know, I'm here bopping away, you know, and I get, it's really nice when you get messages like that from your, you know, your customers, we quite often do because we're, you know, it's, it's, it's a process. If you buy one of our systems, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not like I buy one today and it gets delivered tomorrow. This is, yeah. this is, this is something that we create together, you know, like from, and, and like you talk about the room, it can be from anything from, Hey, should I get a rug or, you know, what kind of ottoman should I get, you know, through to, can you help me design this whole space? You know, so it's, it's it it becomes and and then uh you had um a guest on uh recently a new zealand guy um he had software that was yeah. you know we we do a similar thing with that with our customers you know um we build up a, a photo photo album we, we give them the the ongoing thing so because it's part of the process it's it's really enjoyable you know you, you fully spec this out like like you would a hypercar and and then you get to you know you get that little bit of dopamine hit every week you know with a cool little image or a Saturday night and you'll you'll pop one through and you know so nice. it's, uh, it's all part of the process too. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Adds like some some more depth to the buying experience. Yeah, yeah, they're very invested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I think that's a that's a good point to start wrapping it up. Um, Thanks very much for coming on the podcast. I you're so welcome. Thank really you for enjoyed the time. this this slightly different one. I hope. It, well, if anyone's still listening, fair yeah. fact, you've enjoyed it too. Um, <laughs> you've made it to the end. Um, but no, thanks very much. Thank you.